Welcome back to The Drawing Board, brought to you by CyberArk. I'm Emma Telpe, and joining us for the second episode in our two-part series on identity security is Adam Markert, CyberArk Solutions Architect. Glad to be here, Emma. In our last video, we discussed how identities have been proliferating at an uncontrollable pace as organizations ramp up their adoption of cloud services and remote work models. Right, and we talked about how this sprawl of identities, human and machine, has coalesced into a massive attack surface, full of vulnerabilities that attackers exploit. So we believe today's threat landscape calls for a new response, identity security. Exactly. To recap, identity security is a holistic approach for protecting your most critical assets, like data and infrastructure, across a range of environments from on-prem to the cloud. Identity security breaks down barriers between key security categories, such as privileged access management, or PAM, and access management. And it brings them together in a modern, unified platform. With intelligent privilege controls at the center, identity security covers the following. Seamlessly securing access for all identities, flexibly automating the identity lifecycle, and providing continuous threat detection and prevention. Why place intelligent privilege controls at the center? Because any identity can gain access to sensitive applications, data, and infrastructure. In response, we infuse these controls across the board. Now, to show how it all comes together, let's take a day in the life look at three types of identities. And we'll start with Rachel. Now, Rachel is a developer working on code for an important new app release. She's got her coffee, she's in her home office, but she's working in the cloud. And to do her job, she'll need access to a highly sensitive resource. So how can we ensure Rachel is protected and productive? First order of business, seamless, secure access. Let's get Rachel into her laptop using an adaptive form of multi-factor authentication. Okay, she's knocking at the door, and we'll compare that knock with historical data on Rachel's typical user activity. Not only will this help us ensure that Rachel is indeed Rachel, but if we see anything suspicious, like multiple failed login attempts, we can prompt for additional authentication factors. Next up, let's apply those intelligent privilege controls from the heart of our framework. We need to ensure Rachel can get into her cloud workspace, but only with the least amount of privilege and for the least amount of time needed to perform essential job tasks. All right, so Rachel's in, she's writing code, but like a protagonist in, say, a sci-fi movie, let's imagine she has a robotic buddy helping out behind the scenes. That's right, a trusty helper bot. So while Rachel codes, the helper bot is performing automated tasks, like committing code to a repository, and that requires privilege credentials. Now, some bots have credentials embedded into their scripts for efficiency's sake, but that's risky. Attackers can find those credentials, move laterally, break in, and do damage. Using the holistic identity security approach, let's again apply intelligent privilege controls. We'll take the bot's credentials and place them in a tamper-proof digital vault where they're automatically rotated. All set, helper bot. Now for example number three, let's focus on a workforce user. But we can actually go back to Rachel. Because yes, she has privileged access to cloud infrastructure, but she's also part of a hybrid workforce collaborating through web apps. Let's say Rachel just opened a browser tab for a popular project management app. Sure, it's an everyday task, but remember in today's environment, sensitive resources can live virtually anywhere, not just with privileged accounts. Perhaps Rachel's app contains a treasure trove of IP data. So we'll once again apply a privilege control, session monitoring. Why? Well. If a bad actor from in or outside the organization were to guess Rachel's password and start rummaging around for files to steal, we would gain a click-by-click -click recording of their bad actions. And while we're at it, let's apply another control for double-checking that the person who initiated this app session, Rachel, is still the one who's using the application. Good call. Now, as we wrap up, let's take a quick look at our third identity security pillar. Now back to our protagonist, Rachel. We'll fast forward six months to a bittersweet moment. Rachel accepted a new job at a new company. We wish her well, but we do need to ensure her access and permissions are shut off at just the right time. And we can do this on time and free of human error by applying lifecycle management controls from our flexible identity automation and orchestration pillar. Meanwhile, our trusty helper bot retains its access. So to recap, identity security programs should secure any human or machine identity that's accessing your organization's resources in any environment and intelligent privilege controls are at the center, since any identity can gain privileged access depending on the context. The end goal? Deliver measurable cyber risk reduction for all identities accessing sensitive resources and data, all done in a way that enables zero trust and enforces least privilege. Thanks for joining us at the drawing board. See you next time. To get a closer look at the CyberArk identity security platform, 
visit cyberarc.com.